Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World Videos. The present chapter is entitled The Nature of Economic Reasoning. In this chapter we are going to see these points. 1. Economics as a science. 2. The models in economics. 3. How to build models. 4. Using models. Then we are going to discover the Ceteris Paribus assumption assessing models, economic as a social science, economics and policy. By the end, we will try to uh, answer some quizzes. So let's get started. Economics is one of the social sciences. So in what sense is it a science? Is it like the natural sciences such as physics and astronomy? What is the significance of the word social in social science? What can economists do? And what is their role in helping governments devise economic policy? The methodology employed by economists has a lot in common with that employed by natural scientists. Both attempt to construct theories or models, which are then used to explain and predict. As an astronomer, for example, constructs models of planetary movements to explain why planets are in the position they are and to predict their position in the future. In order to explain and predict, the economist constructs models which show simplified relationships between various economic phenomena. For example, a model of a market shows the relationships between demand, supply and price. Although most models can be described verbally, they can normally be represented more precisely in graphical or mathematical form. Models are constructed by making general hypotheses about the causes of economic phenomena. For example, that consumer demand will rise when consumer incomes rise. These hypotheses will often be based on observations. This process of making general statements from particular observations is known as induction. Using models. Well, explanation. Models explain by showing how things are caused, what the causes of inflation are, why workers in some industries earn more than others, and so on. Prediction Models are sometimes used to make simple forecasts. For example, inflation will be below 5% next year. Usually, however, predictions are of the if-then variety. For example, if demand for goods X rises, its price will rise. This process of drawing conclusions from models is known as deduction. When making such deductions, it has to be assumed that nothing else that can influence the outcome has changed in the meantime. For example, if demand of uh, good X rises, its price will rise assuming the cost of producing good X has not fallen. This is known as the Ceteris Paribus Assumption. So it is Latin for other things being equal. Let's see a set together a case study. Because of the complexities of the real world, economic models have to make various simplifying assumptions. Sometimes, however, economists are criticized for making unrealistic assumptions assumptions that make their models irrelevant. The following joke illustrates the point. There were three people cast away on a desert island. A chemist, an engineer, and an economist. There was no food on the island and their plight seemed desperate. Then they discovered a crate of canned food that had been washed up on the island. When they realized that they had no means of opening the cans, they decided that each of them should use their expertise to find a solution. 
the chemist searched around for various minerals that could be heated up to produce a compound that would burn through the lids of the cans. The engineer hunted around for rocks and then worked out what height of tree they would have to be dropped from in order to smash open the cards. Meanwhile, the economist sat down and thought, assuming we had a can opener and so on. So it's funny. Let's talk about assessing models. Models can be judged according to how successful they are in explaining and predicting. If the predictions are wrong, the first thing to do is to check whether the deductions were correctly made. If they were, the model must be either adapted or abundant in favor of an alternative model with better predictive ability. But in economics, as with many other disciplines, academics are often unwilling to abandon their models. Instead, they prefer the minimum adaptation necessary. This can lead to lively debates between different schools of thought, each claiming that their models paint a more accurate picture of the economy. There has been a great deal of debate recently about why economics models failed to forecast the financial crisis of 2007-2008. Indeed, in September 2010, Ben Bernanke, Federal Reserve Board Chairman, said the fail of the economic models did not mean that they were irrelevant or significantly flawed. Rather than throwing out the models, more work was needed to capture how the financial system impacts on many of the main mm, on stability and growth. So others disagreed. They claimed that many of the main models that they had failed to predict the crisis were fundamentally flawed and needed replacing with other models, perhaps amended versions of older ones, perhaps new ones. Let's move on to economic as a social science. Economics concerns human behavior. One problem here is that individuals often behave in very different ways. People have different tastes and different attitudes. This problem, however, is not as serious as it may seem at first sight. The reason is that people, on average, are likely to behave more predictably. For example, if the price of a product goes up by 5%, we might be able to predict ceteris paribus that the quantity demanded will fall by approximately sorry, 10%. This does not mean that every single individual's demand will fall by 10%, only that total demand will. Some people may demand a lot less, others may demand the same as before. Even so, there are still things about human behavior that are very difficult to predict even when we are talking about whole groups of people? How, for example, will firms react to a rise in interest rates when making their investment decisions? This will depend on things such as the state of business confidence, something that is notoriously difficult to predict. How will a business respond to price changes by its rivals. This will often depend on how it thinks its rivals themselves will react to its our own response. How will people respond to a crisis, such as the global banking and credit crisis of 2007? This depended very much on the mood of financial and other companies and individuals. A mood of pessimism can quickly spread but not to a degree that is easily predictable. For these reasons, there is plenty of scope for competing models in economics, each making different assumptions and leading to different policy conclusions. As a result, economics can often be highly controversial. 
As we shall see later, different political parties may adhere to different schools of economic thought. Thus, the political left may adhere to a model which implies that governments must intervene if unemployment is to be cured, whereas the political right may adhere to a model which implies that unemployment will be reduced if the government intervenes less and relies more on the free market. One branch of economics that has seen considerable growth in recent years is behavioral economics, which adds elements of psychology to traditional models in an attempt to gain a better understanding of decision-making by investors, consumers, and other economic participants. Behavioral economists set up experiments and simulations to see how people respond to various set of circumstances. The fact that there are different economic theories does not mean that economists always disagree. Despite the popular belief that if you led to all economists of the world down to end, they would still not reach a conclusion. There is in fact a large measure of agreement between economists about how to analyze the world and what conclusions to draw. The last point is related to economics and policy. Indeed, economists play a major role in helping governments to devise economic policy. In order to understand this role, it is necessary to distinguish between positive and normative statements. A positive statement is a statement of fact. It may be right or wrong, but its accuracy can be tested by appealing in, to the facts. Unemployment is rising, inflation will be over 6% by next year, and if the government cuts taxes, imports will rise, are all examples of positive statements. A normative statement is a statement of value, a statement about what ought or ought not to be, about whether something is good or bad, desirable or undesirable. It is right to tax the rich more than the poor. The government ought to reduce inflation and old age pensions ought to be increased are all examples of normative statements. They cannot be proved or disproved by a simple appeal to the facts. Economists can only contribute to questions of policy in a positive way. That is, they can analyze the consequences of following certain policies. They can say which of the two policies is more likely to achieve a given aim, but they should not, as economists, say whether the aims of the policy are desirable. For example, economists may argue that a policy of increasing government expenditure will reduce unemployment and raise inflation, but they cannot, as economists, decide whether such a policy is desirable. Key idea, the importance of the positive normative distinction. Economics can only contribute to policy issues in a positive way. Economists, as scientists, should not make them only as individual people with no more moral right than any other individual. Well, now let's do together some quizzes. One, economists tend to judge a model based upon the reality of its assumptions, the accuracy of its predictions, or its simplicity or its complexity? The answer here is C. Economists tend to judge a model based upon its simplicity. 2. If a model's predictions are correct, then A. Its assumptions must have been correct. It is proven to be correct. C. Both A and B. D. None of the above. The answer here is D. 3. Most microeconomic models assume that decision makers wish to A. Make themselves as well off as possible. B. Act selfishly. C. Not cooperate with others. Or D. None of the above.
As you can see, the answer is A. Indeed, most microeconomic models assume that decision makers wish to make themselves as well off as possible. For which of the following is an example of a normative statement? A. A higher price for a good causes people to want to buy less of that good. B. A lower price for a good causes people to, buy, to want to buy more of that good. C. To make the good available to more people, a lower price should be set. D. If you consume this good, you will be better off. The answer is C. Which so uh, C to make the good available to more people, a lower price should be set. It is an normative statement. Five. Which of the following is an example of a normative statement? A. Since this good is bad for you, you should not consume it. B. This good is bad for you. C. If you consume this good, you will get sick. Or D. People usually get sick after consuming this good. So, the right sentence is A. Since this good is bad for you, you should not consume it. 6. Use the following two statements to answer this question. 1. Economic theories are developed to explain observed phenomena by deducing from a set of basic rules and assumptions. 2. Economic theories use value judgments to determine which people ought to pay more taxes. A. Both 1 and 2 are true. B. 1 is true and 2 is false. C. 1 is false and 2 is true. D. Both 1 and 2 are false. So the correct answer as you can see is B, 1 is true and 2 is false. Quiz number 7. Which of the following is a positive statement? A. The President of the United States ought to be elected by a direct vote of the American people rather than the Electoral Coll College. B. A fundamental assumption of the economic theory of consumer behavior is that consumers always prefer having more of any good to having less of it. C. Because many adults cannot afford to go to college, tax credits for tuition should be introduced. D. All of the above or none of the above. So as you can see, the answer is B. A fundamental assumption of the economic theory of consumer behavior is that consumers always prefer having more of any good to having less of it. It's natural. Eight. Which of the following is a normative statement? A. The taxes paid by the poor should be reduced in order to improve the income distribution in the US. B. State governments should not subsidize corporations by training welfare recipients. C. Presidential candidates should not be given uh, funds from the federal government to run campaigns. D. The sea otter should not be allowed to spread into Southern California coastal waters because it will reduce the value of fisheries. Or E, all of the above. So the answer is E, all of the above. Quiz number nine. Which of the following is a positive statement? Intermediate microeconomics should be required of all economic majors in order to build a solid foundation in economic theory. B. The minimum wage should not be increased because this action would increase unemployment. C. Smoking should be restricted on all airline flights. D. All automobile passengers should be required to wear seat belts in order to protect them against injury. Or E. None of the above. So, as you can see, the answer is E. None of the above. Eventually, in this section, we saw that 1. The methodology used by economists is similar to that used by natural scientists. Economists construct models which they use to explain and predict economic phenomena. These models can be tested by appealing to facts and seeing how successful they have been predicted or explained by the model. Unsuccessful models can be either abundant or amended. 2. Being a social science, 
Economics is concerned with human actions. Making accurate predictions in economics is very difficult given that economics has to deal with a consultancy changing environment. Eventually, economists can help governments to devise policy by examining the consequences of alternative courses of action. In doing this, it is important to separate positive questions about what the facts of the policies are from normative ones as to what the goals of policy should be. Economists, in their role as economists, have no superior right to make normative judgments. They do, however, play a major role in assessing whether a policy meets the political objectives of government or opposition. So this is the end of the present chapter. The next chapter will be entitled Factors of Production. Thank you very, uh, very much for your attention.